Once grid lines have been placed in a model, you'll notice that if you select a grid line, temporary blue construction dimensions appear. By clicking on the dimension itself and changing its value, it'll actually move the grid line position. To place actual grid lines, first click on the Annotate tab at the top of the screen, then you can choose a dimension tool. In this case, I'll choose the Align tool. Unlike AutoCAD, which dimensions objects from points, Revit actually dimensions objects by their edges to other edges. So hovering over a grid line, you'll notice the entire edge is highlighted. I'll click to start the dimension, drag across, highlight over the second grid line, and click a second time. Clicking a third time in white space places the dimension. I'll hit escape a couple times to get out of the dimension tool. You'll notice that once the dimension is placed, if I select and drag a grid line, the dimension moves with it and the value changes. I can also move the grid line by first selecting it, which highlights the dimension in blue, which I can then select the text and change the value directly. You'll notice that you can't change the object's position by just double clicking on the dimension first. Doing this opens up a dimension text dialog window, which is essentially just a text override. As you place other dimensions, you'll notice that Revit wants to automatically snap them to a line. You can also move the text of the dimension out by grabbing its handle. If you move it out far enough, a leader will appear, as long as the leader option has been chosen in the option box located here. Unchecking that makes the leader disappear. If you move the text back into position, it'll snap back. You also notice when you select a dimension, a little blue unlocked padlock appears. By clicking the padlock, that locks and constrains the dimension into place. What that means now is that if, it, if I take this grid line and move it, the grid line it's dimension to moves with it. This can complicate the model, so you don't want to lock and constrain dimensions if you really don't mean to. You'll notice that this isn't the same as pinning an object down to keep it from moving. If you just want to pin an object down to keep it from moving, the best tool to use is the pin tool by first selecting the object clicking pin at the top, you'll see a, a pin icon appear, which means you can't move it unless you click it once more to unpin it. You can also use dimensions to equally space objects apart. First, I'll delete these old dimensions. You'll notice when I delete a constrained dimension that a dialog box pops up warning me that I've deleted the dimension. If I don't click unconstrain, the two grid lines will still be constrained to each other even though the dimension's been deleted. So I want to make sure to hit the unconstrained button. So to equally space all of the grid lines apart from each other, grab the, gr grab the dimension tool again and hovering over the first grid line, I'll click to start and then hover over the second one and keep going until all the objects I want to dimension are dimensioned in one string. Clicking in the white space to place this dimension, now that they're all in one string, you'll see that an EQ option um, pops up. If I click on EQ, it will move all of the grid lines into position. If you want to change what objects are being dimensioned in a string, you don't have to start all over again. You can always select the dimension string and click Edit Witness Lines in the top of the screen. By doing that, you can choose the different objects that you wish to dimension. Dimensioning other objects uses the same process. For example, if I want to dimension these walls, I just have more edges to choose from. Also, it may be hard to see all the detail of the specific edges you want to dimension from. By default, Revit shows you the actual line weights that will print on paper, but you can change this temporarily to a more reference line weight like you would see in AutoCAD by going to the View tab at the top of the screen and then choosing Thin Lines. By choosing that, you can toggle the true line weight on and off. If you still don't see all the, de the detail information of the wall you want to see, you might also want to check your detail level in the checkered box at the bottom of the screen. By clicking on this, you can toggle through three different detail level options. So to dimension walls, I'll go back to the Annotate tab, choose the Dimension tool, and hover over the wall I want to start with. 
You can see that I can choose the outside edge, the center line, or the inside edge. But while hovering over the, law, the wall, if I use the tab key, I can now have the option of choosing any edge of the layers of the wall I want to. When I pick the edge I want, I can continue across and using the tab key, find the other layers of the walls as I go across. Finally, I'll click in white space to place the dimension and I can click EQ to equally space the walls apart. The process also works for windows. Clicking to start, I drag over it You'll notice that as I hover over different objects, in the bottom left corner of the screen, a text dialog box tells me what object I have. This is important when dimensioning doors and windows because you want to make sure that you're dimensioning the actual window object itself and not just the edge of the wall. You can use the tab key to toggle through the different objects that you have selected. In this case, once I find the center line, I can keep dimensioning, click on the other wall, and place to finish. Now that it's a continuous string, I can click EQ and that centers the window in between the walls. If you started the project with an OPN template, you can also add a centerline symbol. To add it, select the dimension, and this time you want to swap it out for a dimension type that has centerline symbols in it. So to swap it out for another type, with the dimension selected, go to the type selector at the top of the screen, use the pull down menu, and choose linear with center. Now you can see a center line symbol appears only where the dimension is at a center line. If I zoom in and if I grab the witness line of the dimension to, to move it to the center line of the wall, you can now see that the center line will appear at that point of the dimension as well. And once the dimension is placed, you can always drag it and using the handles, you can move the witness line gap. You can change the other parameters of the dimension as well using its element properties such as the, the text size, tick mark, line weight, size, and style. To do this, first select the dimension, then go to Element Properties at the top corner left of the screen, pull down to Type Properties, and the Type Properties box will appear. Here you can change out the dimensions of the tick marks, its length and line weights, and text sizes. Once you have all the, all the different options you want, and modifications made, you can click Apply or click OK, and the changes should take effect.